In the version 18.2 of Universe Sandbox 2, Planet 9 has actually been added as one of the simulations uh, to the game. Uh, you can reach these two simulations by going into uh, the main menu and here we have evidence for Planet 9 and Planet 9 in our solar system. Uh, this was added r ridiculously fast, as a matter of fact this was added over the weekend, which makes me think that these guys did not really have a very good weekend, they were working really hard to try to satisfy us, the users, and I'm really really happy they did because this allows me to explore Planet 9 in more detail because it has now been officially added to the simulation, and here, the one I actually really like is this one, Evidence for Ninth Planet, and today we're going to be talking about this, and we're gonna try to terraform it, yes that's right, you heard me, we're going to Terraform Planet 9. Welcome to What the Math. Anton, how can you terraform Planet 9? That's impossible. That's what you think. We're gonna do, we're gonna go all science and we're gonna do the impossible. We're gonna basically turn this majestic, dark, scary looking Planet 9. 9 into a terrestrial world and uh, this will be done using a little bit of a cheating technique that I like to call a uh, greenhouse effect and uh, which means that I actually have to erase this planet 9 because this one here unfortunately doesn't allow me to modify its greenhouse effect uh, because um, I think it was a, a, a static planet that was added in this particular simulation it doesn't really change its greenhouse effect doesn't change uh, its tidal heating effects either, but um, before we start terraforming, let's actually take a look at these simulations. So this one here just adds the actual planet, you can get to see its orbit uh, in comparison to Sedna and in comparison to everything else that was really, really, really far away. By the way, Earth is here, the blue, blue line that you see right here. That's Earth. Now let's zoom out, zoom out some more, and here you go, Planet 9. The, um, the orbital period here is about 12,000 years, and we can actually go into the motion to check this all out. And the semi-major axis is uh, 500 astronomical units. This is 500 times as far away from the Sun as the Earth, and this is the orbital period that you see right here. Alright, so how are we going to terraform this? Oh, and by the way, the evidence simulation, what this shows you is, if, especially if you go into orbits, it will show you the orbits of these dwarf planets that basically um, made scientists realize that there's gotta be something else, some kind of other body somewhere over here passing by through this region that possibly pushed them out into the outer solar system in, the, in such fashion. And I've talked about uh, this in more detail in my previous video, so you can check it out. Uh, this was the video called Planet 9. Anyway, so um, let's uh, try to terraform this, but we need to actually recreate this planet and we need to add our own planet before we can do that. And here it is, a very dark, very gloomy, but very, very uh, terraformable Planet 9. It's uh, basically recreated all of the orbital elements. It's a, it's a world that we can now possibly terraform, and the orbit is exactly the same as it was before. Uh, and basically here we have the um, quite an eccentric elliptical orbit, where periapsis is right here, apoapsis is right here. And it's a really, 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 really far away from the sun. Um, its eccentricity is uh, 0.6, its inclination, and this specifically we're talking about uh, the um, inclination toward the plane of other planets. So other planets are here, and this planet is at approximately 30 degrees inclination, and um, the rest is here. And so, um, yes, Planet 9, so let's try to terraform it now, how can we do this? It's really, really far away, it's really dark, it's really cold, it's very likely to be an ice giant, even though I technically made it uh, a, an actual terrestrial planet, uh, it very likely has a lot of water and ice on it, it's probably an, uh, an ice giant, so um, we're going to try our best and see what happens, so, so what we're going to do is, we're going to abuse the greenhouse effect system, and that means we're going to give this planet um, a lot and a lot of atmosphere, let's start with one atmosphere, this is the atmosphere that is present on Earth, and you'll see that greenhouse effect has already increased to 1.18, we're gonna increase uh, infrared emissivity as well, and albedo is going to be decreased because this is a very non-reflective world, and because we want it to be that way. And watch, as soon as I start increasing the surface pressure, uh, the greenhouse effect starts going up. See how it's already at 3 degrees? And this is because we are getting a little bit of sunlight from, uh, from the tiny, tiny speck of light right there, Let's actually land on the surface, see what it looks like. Uh, we're gonna disable the orbits and just look into the skies, if we can actually find it. Where is the sun? And there it is. Now, it would probably be a lot smaller than this. I'm actually fairly certain it would be a very tiny speck, not as big as it is here. Uh, but you know what? Uh, this is a good representation of how far away the sun is for us. 
And so, quite uh, scientifically, but unrealistically, we're going to be increasing the atmospheric uh, pressure here, and this will increase the greenhouse effect. This is basically a similar effect that makes Venus ridiculously hot, and that uh, is endangering our planet with the so-called greenhouse gas emissions that we have been releasing into the atmosphere, specifically carbon dioxide. But here, um, uh, the gases that are probably doing this to this planet are things like methane, because methane is a very, very powerful greenhouse gas. And if there's a lot of methane on the atmosphere here, and if uh, the atmosphere is very, very thick with methane, uh, you never know. It might be actually a warm world, but we obviously will not be able to survive on it because of uh, us not being able to breathe methane. Uh, anyway, so as you, we increase in the surface pressure, and here we're actually currently at 300 um, atmospheres, which is basically the same surface pressure as, I believe, under 3,000 meters of water. Um, now... Many people will say this is impossible to survive, but it actually is uh, th theoretically possible. Um, theoretically, it, it is not impossible for humans to survive at these pressures because we are water, and um, our our pressure abil uh, or our ability to survive pressure is actually quite uh, quite uh, impressive, which has been proven over and over by many deep uh, sea divers. Uh, I believe the current record stands at 350 meters, and the only reason the person actually had to resurface again is because, well, um, first of all, he or uh, he actually ran out of air, uh, but second is um, we need to have a very special um, air mixture for us to breathe safely, uh, because at high pressures, oxygen becomes toxic, and so you can't really breathe oxygen, you have to come up with a new mixture. Uh, anyway, so we're gonna just keep increasing this, you know, and you see the greenhouse effect is keep, keep, keeps going up. And actually, I th I'm pretty sure I need to go into like hundreds of thousands here. So here, are hundred thousand atmospheres. Let's go to two hundred, uh, three hundred. And as the pressure here increases, so does the greenhouse effect. Uh, now, the other way I could have done this is obviously by adding an object um, orbiting around this planet and using the so-called tidal heating effect and i'll show you in a second how you could do that if you want to try this yourself and okay so what, how high do we want this to be current temperature is 260 uh or effective temperature is 360 and we want this to be at approximately let's just say 280 there we go uh the current uh, pressure here is 2.2.5 2 million atmospheres um yeah it's, it's a little bit uh, pressurized but you know what it's fine it's science it makes sense uh, all right, so let's accelerate time. Uh, or actually, we can just manually go into temperature and change this to zero. And you'll notice, look at that, instant transformation. Ah, look at this beauty. Clouds and oceans and so on and so forth. Temperature is already really nice and warm-ish, getting to about one degree Celsius. And surprisingly, the atmosphere here it looks very similar to Venus. It's very orangey. Now, I am going to modify materials a little bit because I do want to have surface here. And so let's actually suck out all the water and turn it into silicates and irons instead. So we're going to have some islands going on. But this planet is going to be ridiculously dark. No matter what you do, it's going to be really, really, really dark because uh, obviously sun is really far away. Okay, so there is some land I see. Let's get some more land going. Here we go. Ah, okay, that's good enough. So there's some continents, some islands. I don't know if you can see it. It's really, really dark, but... Uh, it is there. We're going to actually move this planet a little bit closer to the sun later so you can see what's going on here. Uh, but yeah, so there we go. It's uh, I think it's actual stable temperature is going to be, let's see, around 10 maybe? Yeah, 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, that's because I made sure that my greenhouse effect stopped at about 297. And we have, uh, it's going to get a little bit warmer than 10, maybe about 15 degrees, which is very similar to Earth actually. So this is uh, Earth-like Planet 9. Terraformed, beautiful, super dark. Uh... Not very inviting to human beings because of the high pressure, but you know what? In the future, we might be able to, to withstand that if we discover some interesting way of breathing at high pressures. And because of the pressure here, it would be the actual atmosphere would be so, so thick that it would be actually thicker than water. So you don't even have to have like... You can basically fly through the atmosphere. You can swim th and fly through the thickness of the air here and possibly die as well, but that's okay. Uh, anyway, so moving on. Let's see if we can uh, actually turn this a little bit warmer. And I just want to see, or I just want to show you how the tidal heating effect works. Uh, if you go into simulation and you go down and enable tidal heating, 
and then you place some some kind of an object orbiting around this planet it will also receive um effects from the tides uh this is obviously the same effect that we get from the moon when moon is orbiting around our planet and let's just pick a random rocky planet that's too big some smaller ah it's too big eh whoa this is so beautiful but too big this is way bigger than i want it to be oh let's just place venus venus works as well so we're gonna place venus right here and as it starts orbiting this planet, uh, you'll notice that it gets a little bit of tidal power. So right here, right about now, there's a bit of a tidal power effect. But because it's so much more massive than Venus, it doesn't really get as much of a heating from this effect. Now, if I were to place Venus a little bit closer, the tidal effects here would... Uh, actually no nothing changed I, this actually might be a bug because this used to work a lot better uh but uh, you do get a little bit of a tidal effect from orbiting bodies and you can actually warm up some of your planets in the game this way as well which i've done previously and you can obviously terraform them this way but we're not going to do that this is kind of uh you know obviously we don't really know if uh, if there are any objects orbiting around planet nine so this is kind of cheating but we, uh, we we did this using greenhouse effect. It works perfectly well, and the temperature is currently 12 degrees Celsius. And we have continents, we have clouds. It's just the only problem is that it's really, really dark. And so, uh, obviously, our mission here is finished, but let's actually take this planet a little bit closer because I would like to see the surface the way it looks under the sunlight. So we're going to move this... Um, move this planet a little bit closer to the sun, and I just realized, actually, the orbiting bodies did kind of change my orbit a little bit so this planet was actually on escape out of the solar system but so let's move it closer and you'll notice that as soon as we start moving closer it will get brighter and brighter and brighter and obviously more hot as well so i may actually have to uh do something about yeah greenhouse effect is already at 510 so let's actually reduce it to about 100 see what happens um so we're gonna start reducing the distance and as we're doing that uh, the 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 side that is exposed to the sun is going to get brighter and brighter. Uh, let's just go to ten astronomical units. There we go. Look at that. Here we go. You can see the surface. You can see everything. Uh, temperature is going to be maybe a little bit colder than it should be. Uh, so we need to increase that again. And and so basically, yeah, this is what the surface of Planet 9 would look like under the sunlight if it was closer to the sun. But obviously that's not the case, and if we do end up landing or visiting that planet one day, what we'll discover is probably not going to be this. As a matter of fact, I'm 99.9% .9 sure it's not going to be this at all. It will be a very dark, very gloomy um, ice world, uh, specifically an ice giant, very likely. Uh, similar to Uranus or similar to Neptune, but... Um, very dark, very, very dark, very scary, very cold. Um, and then we're talking about temperatures, uh, you know, of maybe minus 200, minus 250 degrees Celsius. And um, if it does have any moons, and if there's actual objects orbiting around it, they're going to be just as dark, just as scary, and just as cold. But I think uh, what I wanted to accomplish in this video has been accomplished. We have terraformed Planet 9. We made it look really beautiful. Although maybe a little bit science fiction-y because it's very unlikely that this planet is what I want it to be in this particular instance. But at the same time, you know what? It's done. It has been accomplished and the planet is terraformed. If you want to try this yourself, you do need to recreate this planet from scratch. Uh, using the same motional uh, or, or orbital parameters that you get in the uh, simulation code experience. Uh, oh, sorry, evidence for ninth planet or planet 9 in our solar system. And then you basically can try to use greenhouse effect or tidal heating to try to warm it up. And I think this is it. I'm going to pause this here and let's actually enjoy this planet. We're going to move it a little bit closer to Earth, see what it does and see what happens. And uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe because there's more science videos, there's more space videos, there's more awesome videos coming. Also, like this video and share it with your friends who you think may like space videos or videos that will teach you a little bit more about life, universe, and everything else. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video, game you later, and bye-bye. Alright, so we're actually at the same distance from the sun as the Earth, and let's actually just place Earth in here for fun and see what happens. And so this is what Earth would look like next to Planet 9 orbiting around it. What I wanted to do is actually maybe possibly collide them together, so let's see what happens. And there you go. This is 
what would happen if Earth collided with Planet 9 or Planet 9 came for a visit and decided to collide with Earth. Obviously, complete and total destruction. 